hello everyone and welcome back to my channel what's up loyal royals i'm back all right so i'm gonna be doing a short set with a marble design so right now i'm going in with my first layer of cuticle cuticle my first layer of primer right now i'm letting my customer dry and then after that i'm gonna apply the primer as i'm applying the acrylic I would like to quickly point out that um, my customer's pinky, this one, is always damaged. So we always make this one shorter than all the other nails because it cracks in the center. So if she hits it, it could break her real nail completely off. So yes, I know it is dramatically shorter, but that's how she wanted it. Also, her thumbs are shorter this time as well. Um... The tips that I normally use are Eden nail tips. You can find them on eBay. I, I try to look on Amazon. I do not think they sell them on Amazon. So if you can't find them on eBay or they're sold out or whatever, just simply Google it. And there's a couple links that will pop up as well. Um, these tips that I'm using right now are not Eden tips. They are basic tips that, that I got from my local Asian nail supply and i normally use them for people who get short nails because eden nails are really good for coffin and stiletto so when it comes to short nails i just go ahead and use the basic tips that i have also some of y'all are commenting about how much product i'm using how much product i'm wasting blah 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 so i got a smaller brush and honey let me tell you it gave me the run for my money i'm using a tammy taylor 12 large flat uh brush it, it was almost 35 dollars and it took me almost halfway through the nails until i got used to the brush being that small because the brush is skinny and the um i don't know what that's called but the bristles are not long so I will say I do like using the smaller brush because I'm not wasting so much product but I know for a fact when I do longer nails I probably will not be using this small brush I will be going back to my 16 or my 18 but I do like the brush but I'm definitely not used to it but hey I tried it it got me off my game for a little bit but the nails still turned out bomb so there's that. That's why I always tell you guys to go with what you are comfortable with because believe it or not, um, I'm using right now a mix that I made. So I also use CND, but it's not just CND in there because I like a certain color. But I can buy a 32 ounce container of acrylic and it, it will last me for almost four and a half months with the technique that I've been using or even longer I never really counted it but so I really don't worry too much about what I'm using because I just go when I do nails I just go I go with the flow and I do my thing that's all I worry about but do what is most comfortable for you for beginners I would get a smaller brush um, until you learn like the product ratio but yeah I tried a smaller brush it, it's it was pretty cool it wasn't that bad
So right here, I'm just filing the nails and shaping. So I like my square nails to be really square. And I want them to match the finger and the natural nail bed as much as possible. I hate wide square nails. I hate wide big jumbo square nails with rounded corners. That is my biggest pet peeve. So when my customers come in and they're, and they're like, I want to try square, but every time I go to somebody else, they make them too wide or too fat or they round the corners and don't make them sharp. I make sure that when they sit in my chair, they get exactly what they're supposed to look like. So I'm really taking my time to make sure that I'm filing needs because my customer has naturally wide nail beds to the point where it doesn't matter what I use, her real nails still somehow kind of hangs over on the side but I just have to make sure that I really really shape them and that's what I'm doing right now is I'm making sure that they look good on both sides remember a good technique is to flip the hand towards them so that you can see from their angle how the nails look but um when you do square you just want to come completely out and make sure everything is flat to the sides and to the top of the of the nail um, as you see, they're not wide, they're not bulky, um, they're very crisp, and the shaping is on point completely. And I'm very proud of the shaping. The shaping turned out amazing. Next, I'm going in with my fine drill bit and I'm going to go ahead and carefully, carefully, carefully go around the cuticle area and make sure the surface of the nails are smooth and remove um, any acrylic or bulk from under the nail and on the sides of the nail. Um, this one in particular is very sharp so and it's flat so it's easy to cut the customer with it. Um, so yeah, you just want to make sure that you're being as careful as possible and you are taking your time and really watching um, what you are doing so that you don't nick your customer. Same with your, um, your files that you use, even your buffers. Normally with my files and my buffers, I like to rub one together so that I can make sure that I'm dulling them down before I start filing. So then I don't end up cutting my customer or getting too close to the skin. But you want to make sure that your customer is relaxed so that you can relax and do your thing. After I have applied my acrylic filed buffed and all of that as well as rinsing the hands um, I'm going to go ahead and do my polish and design remember if your customer is getting gel polish do not allow them to use um, soap oil or anything like that before you apply it because it will hinder the process for your gel it will uh, hinder the gel to not stick or cure correctly so just make them um, rinse their hands with water so I am doing a classic marble design and this is like classic classic like back in the day classic um, I love this design. I think it's very elegant. It can be very fun and classy and it can even be very wild and flamboyant. So my customer wanted to get colors that were semi-neutral but not too neon. So I went with a gray base 
and then I'm using a blue, a teal, well, mint color, and kind of like a dark fuchsia color. And what you want to do is with gel polish, same with regular polish, you want to apply it and do the swirl while it's wet. So you want to paint down a base layer and then you want to put the drops of color on top and then you can take um, a dotting tool, you can take a toothpick, you can take a bobby pin and you just want to swirl them in kind of like an S design for the classic way. There are other ways to do marble designs but I always go for this one first because I feel it looks the smoothest and the cleanest. So let me know what you uh, think in the comments about the marble design. I love this design. This is my go-to design for even myself. One thing I wanted to point out when you're doing classic marble designs, normally, depending on the color, well, actually, no, scratch that. Anytime you are doing a classic marble design, you only want to do it one time. With gel, it is a little more easier to see depending on the brand and how pigmented the polish is. So with D&D in particular, all of their colors are very pigmented and very creamy compared to certain other colors like China Glaze or OPI. So what I'll do is whenever I'm doing the classic marble design, I'm going to make sure that I'm applying the design in a thicker way because I'm only doing the design one time. I'm not going back over it and over it. Um, so yeah, just make sure when you apply it, you apply it kind of thick, but not to where it's like running all over the nail, you know, just so that you can make sure that you see it completely.
Next, I'm going to be using good old Faithful Jealous Top It Off Top Coat. I'm going after the nails have dried completely for 60 seconds on each hand, sometimes for longer to make sure all of the nails are covered and depending on how the light is, I'm going to go in with my clear top coat and I'm going to make sure that I cover from sidewall to sidewall and capping the tip and allow that to dry for 60 seconds or 70. It's up to you. Just make sure them babies are dry. After the nails have dried completely, I'm going to go in with some alcohol on a paper towel and wipe off the sticky layer. Um, some top coats have a sticky layer. Majority of the non-wipe top coats don't have a sticky layer. And then after that, I'm going to apply some cuticle oil and that is it. Alright guys, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Of course, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Help me get to a thousand subscribers, you guys. Also, please comment down below what you want to see because, honey, I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what to upload for you guys. So, let me know in the comments what you want to see or what you need help on, what you don't understand, so I can try to get videos out for that. Don't forget, glitter makes everything better, so keep shining. See you next time.